what we're seeing at Storm is, is uh, very much so every year we go into organic growth. To find the resource last year, we'll bring the Thunder and, and Lightning Ridge discoveries into resource category this year. And then also this year, we've already made two other discoveries at Squall and the Gap. Talking copper here with AW1 and Dave. We've got a lot of updates to talk about. Should we start with the formal agreement on your royalty funding that you just closed? Absolutely, Arne. Um, yeah, it's uh, a big milestone. It's taken a while actually to get through, but you know, with the the amount of due diligence on these things and and lawyers and things like that, it's um you know certainly taking its time. But I'm very happy to to secure that. With that comes the immediate payment of the initial tranche of the royalty, which is um, six million dollars. So looking forward to getting that in the, the door, and, and we're helping out on this year's exploration program, and uh, looking forward to uh, also getting into the next couple of milestones as well in the coming months. Yeah, I mean you've got a lot of things lined up, like uh, the PFS, the pre feasibility study for early 2025. I mean, you've had a great drilling season now in 24 with the 22,000, 23,000 meters now drilled. Yet, we've just talking about this in preparation here. The share price hasn't yet picked up. It is a tough market right now. Investors looking for immediate reward, even though the project is progressing, you're de-risking. Let's just uh, touch base also on the deep drill hole that you've just delivered with some 1.2, 2.2 and 3.7%. Could you add a bit of context there for those invested and following AW1 on what that actually means now, these deep drill results for the potential of Storm? The short answer is a lot, as investors would know if they've been with it with a while. We've done seven holes down at the at below Storm. So again, to refresh people's memories, that we have a bunch of near surface open pitable deposits, Cyclone, Corona, Chinook and Cirrus. And so, you know, we've always had the belief that um, Storm's a very large system and, and potentially stack copper system. And so, look, every single hole we've drilled to date has had a sniff of copper at sort of the 200 to 300 metre vertical depth. We've kind of confirmed that. But this is the real, the first real intersection that when we saw the core, we thought, well, this really does look like those near surface deposits where the holes previously had bits and pieces. We had up to 2.7% copper in the second hole last year. But this is the first real incidence of a good thickness. So, you know, if you're looking at the, the three things you really need to do to sort of, you know, in terms of discovery, how, how things move along, you know, first confirmation of copper at those levels, which the, the previous holes have done, potential economic intersection where this hole is really starting to look at doing, getting those underground mineable grades in the two and 3% copper. And then the next box to tick will obviously be volume. And um, do we get the thicknesses? across consistent horizons and also that volume. So that's going to be the next uh, piece of the puzzle. Yeah, and uh, talking about volume, I mean, um, pre-feasibility study. So that's kind of the preliminary examination of the potential of the mining project. That's set for early 2025. Is that on track? Uh, where are we with that PFS? So a lot of milestones to occur prior to that, but it have also been occurring. So as again, investors would realize, we put out the, a DSO um, potential update a month or so ago, and that's highly positive, And that's the preferred processing route for us going forwards at Storm. So that's a massive tick and a massive milestone. Um, obviously the resource at the start of this year, so all the drilling we're doing, not all the drilling, but a good chunk of the drilling now is about the resource expansion and also upgrade. So moving a lot of those inferred resources into indicated. So these are both key things um, which will go into resource update at the back end of this year. And then that'll flow into a potential economic study at the, the start of next year. So that that's that side. In the background, we've also been doing a lot of environmental studies. So this is was our second season on the ground up at Storm doing baseline work. So in the water, dust, monitoring, uh, floor and floor and things like that. That was successfully achieved. We installed a weather station this year as well. And also in the background, we're doing mining studies. So putting pits around the resources we have looking at infrastructure, where it's going to go, airstrips, camps, and things like that, and putting all the, the, the costs and assumptions around those. So that's all been going on in the background. So that means we're very advanced for the studies coming up. We just require the uh, updated resource to um, really top that off. And uh, on this uh, pre-feasibility studies, um, two questions. One is, uh, is that deep uh, drill project or the deep drill results, are they going to be part of the pre-feasibility study or is it going to be only be focused on the open pit? potential only focus on the open pit so you, the best way to think of storm is in a number of stages and so we have this initial call it stage one which is the dso opportunity was and again to remind investors we make the two piles of copper we make a dso copper which 70 percent of the copper goes to and then a, a lower grade copper stockpile which gets put aside for 
potentially um, processing with flotation or other traditional uh, methods later down the track. So we, we consider it two stages. The expiration is almost like the third stage on that. So what we're seeing at Storm is, is uh, very much so every year we go into organic growth. So to find the resource last year, we'll bring the Thunder and, and Lightning Ridge discoveries into resource category this year. And then also this year, we've already made two other discoveries at Squall and The Gap, which hopefully we can bring into resource category next year. So year on, year out, we're growing a thing um, incrementally, but then also putting this exploration overlay as well, which hopefully give us that exponential sort of growth potential. So if we were to find um, that this horizon down below cyclone, which we've discovered in the last week or so, is continuous and another cyclone, well, that's quite quickly going to grow things exponentially and obviously double things very quickly. So that's the third phase and that's going to be ongoing in the coming years as well okay and talking about markets here of course um revenue free revenue companies being uh, quite ignored and punished right now we also see that on the likes of joby aviation where you have companies even in the tech space which normally has a lot more love and attention from investors that they're progressing their project but then again as they are pre-revenue, a lot of investors are on the sidelines waiting until that revenue mark is being hit. Um, so when are we due to expect production here on the open pit copper project here with Storm? Yeah, well, that's a good question. And look, that's in the hand of the permitting and, and things like that. But look, we're, we we're hoping that we can move this forward very quickly. Um, again, we've front end loaded the, the environmental, the, um, the, the longer lead time items for the permitting side of things. So... Once you have your PAA or PFS level study, you can then essentially apply for the the mining permit. So that's the key milestone, and that starts the clock on what's usually a two to three year period to um uh, up in that part of the world for this type of mine. So you, you make a good point, and um, exploration companies are really not being rewarded in the market at the moment. And um, you know that's across the board. That's not that us, you know, specifically us or or, or any other company. And so particularly in um, you know things like the, the rare earth and lithium and things like that. So copper, we're, we're sitting there a little bit better. But look, if we were to go to the market year on, year out, you know, for foreseeable future, then that's obviously going to dilute the company and, and not the best way to sort of manage capital. And going forwards, while trying to expand the project, it's obviously expensive to do these things. And so the sooner we can get into production and get our own cash flow and then self-fund all these exploration activities, the better. And, and that's why we're really pushing to get... Uh, the shortest timeline possible to, to first uh, out the door. Yeah, and commenting here on markets, if we look at the current copper prices, we're just at $4.22 uh, here. And that is still, of course, a retraction from the $5 we initially had a few months ago. But on the long-term trend, if we look back to 2020 or 2016, we were at like $2.10. Um, so the long-term trend is up. Yes, of course, also cost of exploration and cost of mining have gone up due to inflation, 20 30%. But it's not as dire as you would think. And if we look at China setting the pace for the electrification, which is the mega trend, why we are bullish on the overall demand for copper going forward. China just sold a million EVs last month, and that's from 6 million EVs in 2023. So that trend is accelerating, um, and that's all on track for demand. And of course, that's a kind of macro economic view on things and that is not directly connected uh, with the share price and with the stock market so we'll see how long that takes until investors rediscover their love for for copper early expiration but um, it's a matter of timing and sometimes it's not uh, quoting rocky balboa here it's not about how hard you can hit but it's about how hard you can get hit and still keep moving forward so dave i think it's really cool to see that the financing is in order. You've got this formal agreement on the royalty funding. You also delivered 4 million savings on 2025 logistics. So I think in terms of cash burn rate and preserving your cash, you've done an excellent job with your team. Yeah, well, thank you. And look, the sea lift was just in, in um, at its storm in the last few days, actually. And so uh, two days unloading, and, and that's, like you've mentioned, brought forward a lot of the fuel, some heavy equipment, lumber, salt for diamond drilling, all for next year. So spending that money this year, it, like you said, will save us in that 3 to $5 million range, which is a massive benefit. And um, look, hopefully we can share some of those photos on the social media and, and put some more news into the market shortly, because that's the first time it's happened at Storm. And what it does do, it doesn't just show us offloading material on, onto the our marine lay down area up there, but it also shows how the logistics work in that part of the world. And you'll see that it's very benign waters. Um, it went without a hitch. You can see it's a you know, very effective and inefficient way to move things around in the north. And um, 
you know, uh, that's the way we're going to get the copper out of there. So it's very exciting to see how it's um, all played out. Yeah, and we've got a clip on uh, the logistics talking about why this is actually a huge USP for the Storm Copper project. So we'll put the link down below. And Dave, again, congrats on making progress here. We're in this together for the long term invested here in AW1 as a disclaimer. And good to see the deep drill results coming in as an initial potential for an underground copper project in addition to the open pit. And Congrats again on 23,000 meters drilled this year, 4 million savings on the logistics for 2025 and pre-feasibility study coming up early 25, plus the formal agreement on the royalty funding, making sure that uh, your cash position is in due order on AW1. Thank you. And look, just to remind people as well, there's a lot of news to come. We're probably only halfway through the assay, so the next few weeks can be very, very busy. Uh, and like I said, there's some important milestones coming up for the project as well. So. No reason to tune out. In fact, a year's probably not a better buying opportunity you'll ever see at American West. So, um, you know, we're really excited about the short and medium term future for us and uh, yeah, looking forward to getting into it. And Dave, looking forward to catching up in person and in November here in Europe. Absolutely. See you then.